welcome to the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise and I am coming to you today from my home in Yonkers, New York, where I live with my husband and our two children. You can find me on the internet as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram. I am also on Ravelry. Um, the podcast has an email address, which is the Earth Tone, which is Earth Tones Girl at gmail.com. And there is also a Ravelry group, the Earth Tones Girl podcast group. Hello, that's my spiel. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It has been three weeks. Oh my gosh, three weeks since my last podcast. Um, wow. February has felt like the longest month ever. <laughs> it's, it's the shortest, but it has felt so incredibly long. Oh my gosh, there's been... A lot of productivity as I'm looking around uh, with stuff to share with you, um, but just, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm going to adjust my camera just a little bit, so I apologize for shaking. That's better. I just want to be closer to you. <laughs> um, things have been really, really good around here. Um, very busy as always. I've got my notes, so I'm gonna, you know what, let me move those over so I'm not constantly looking off to my right. Um, yes, so we had re-entry after Vogue Knitting Live. Thank you so much. The response to that video, um, that podcast episode has just been incredible. Thank you all so very much. Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten that many views um, on an episode yet, so thank you very much for that. Um, thank you to all of the new subscribers. Um, there have been so many. Wow. <laughs> That's another reason I really wanted to come back here and see you all today. Um, I had mentioned a giveaway in the last episode, so I really want to talk about that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I didn't want any more time to pass without talking about it. So, yes, um, Folk Knitting Live recap. It was great. Uh, thank you again for the response. Um, and as I always say, re-entry after these events is very, very hard. Um, so I caught a cold. <laughs> Um, just wasn't feeling well. It's I, I really felt a little run down. I felt run down after recording, and I said this in the last episode too. Um, felt run down, but and it was trying to take hold, trying to be a cold, but trying not, and then it really hit me. So, uh, and the kids have been really busy at school as always. Um, it was right when I did that last episode, it was right before break starting and everything. And then Kira got sick also. Um, she had strep. Um, I think in the last episode I said she had the flu. I might have said that. Well, she had the flu and about two and a half weeks later got strep. So our house was was sort of a ground zero. It just wasn't pleasant around here. Um, and then I got sick and it, ugh. there has been knitting though. There has been making. Um, Yes, and then we had winter break. We had winter break uh, for a week, so that was last week the kids were off. Kira was off the first half of the week and CJ was off the whole week. Um, and then on Sunday, my poor boy came down with this fever of about 101 and we couldn't get it to go down. It was um, over 48 hours of trying to bring this fever down. Uh, we finally took him to the doctor. And um, they said there was really nothing they could do. It was a virus and kind of had to ride it out. And then he slept yesterday. Well, you know, details don't matter. The point is yesterday afternoon or evening, we put him down to bed really early and this child slept about 11 hours straight. Didn't wake up once, no bathroom breaks. He slept right through and woke up this morning looking like sunshine. <laughs> so um, if you check my Insta story on Instagram, you can see a picture of us from this morning. Um, we do Snapchats every morning. So if you wanna see that, um, you can go over there and have a look. So he is all better and he's back to school. So I thought, okay, get in front of the camera. Now's the time. <laughs> So here I am. Um, there is a lot to share with you uh, in a short amount of time, so I'm going to try to be as concise and to the point as I can. Um, and I also wanted to mention, I got a comment, um, I think it was the Folk Knitting Live recap, or one of the last two episodes, and the person said, I, I greatly appreciated her feedback, and she said to me, um, I won't quote the exact comment, but the, the gist of it was to please look in the camera when I am talking on my podcast and not at whatever it is I'm looking at. Um, 
that is very hard for me to do. I did reply to her message, but I wanted to acknowledge it here in case any of you are also thinking about it. And I know it's been a topic for a couple of other podcasters. Um, Lerka, who is Fiber Tales, has talked about this. Um, Ellie, who skeined her knits in her last episode, um, or second to last, I know she talked about it as well. Um, it's a very hard thing to do. I record on my phone, on my iPhone, and it's the when you look at the phone, so here's the top of the phone, here's the bottom of the phone, the camera is here on the phone. Here's the screen, here's the bottom of the phone with the home button, um, for those of you that don't have an iPhone. And it's very difficult to shift my gaze here when my face is here. Um, I've tried it, I will try it right now to show you. Okay, I am now looking at the camera. I can see myself, I, I know that I'm there and I know that I'm gesturing and I'm talking, um, but if you notice my eyes are constantly flipping, it's like nystagmus, they're, they're constantly moving from the camera to my face, camera to my face, and I find it very hard to focus. Um, it's also, for some strange reason, I'm sitting here, but for some strange reason, it also makes me a little dizzy. I don't know why, and I've never said that before on the podcast, but it does, it really does. If I try to constantly focus on that one point, um, for some reason, again, my eyes want to move this way, they wanna move this way, they wanna focus on everything behind the camera, um, and it's it's very distracting, and I can, I'm already feeling the headache starting, so, I apologize if that is, okay, let's go back here, Whew, so much better. <laughs> My eyes are now where they used or usually are. Uh, I am sorry if that is distracting for you. I'm really, really sorry, um, but this is how I podcast. This is probably how I will continue to podcast. Um, so yes, I just wanted to address that here, and I have. If you have any feedback or you wanna let me know what you think, please leave a message down below. Um, there it is. So that's that. Um, let's talk about knitting, you guys. There is so much going on right now. Uh, I also mentioned in the last episode that I was going to be doing another cal, a new cal, and that is definitely happening. I don't have all the bells and whistles for it yet. I don't have the picture um, for the hashtag to put on Instagram, but you know what? Those are incidentals and don't matter. I really want to get this cal up and running. It's very important to me to get it up and running. It's called the No Fear Sock Cowl. Again, the No Fear Sock Cowl. My word or theme for 2019 um, is no fear and focus. And so far, this year has been very, very challenging and it has been really hard to do that, to continue with through this year with no fear and maintain my focus um, but I'm doing it I'm doing it and I'm doing it with a smile on my face um, I'm doing it with hope in my heart and so far it's working you guys and I want to bring that to you guys with socks now I was refer I'm referring to bigger things which we'll talk about later but um, it applies to everything it applies to absolutely absolutely every area of your life to try to approach things with no fear and to truly focus on what you're doing, what you are trying to not be fearful of. Okay. So that is how I feel about socks. And there've been a lot of comments also. I get a lot of questions, um, about sock knitting. How do I start? I'm a beginner. There was also a comment, um, in one of the last two episodes from a knitter. She said that she can't find and I don't have her name here, but if you're watching, hi, if you remember that you wrote this comment down, um, she wrote that she's about to work on a cowl, cowl um, and she's still a new knitter, but she can't find, and, but she doesn't dare try socks. And I thought, no, 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 no. Why not dare, dare? There are so few things in this life that you can do and that you actually get to do over. So, Socks should not be one of them. Um, if you're knitting a sock and you make a mistake, rip it out. If you mess up your stitch count or you mess up your color work or whatever it is, rip it out and start again. No damage done, no harm done, no harm, no foul. Nobody's injured, nobody's insulted. You get to do it again. 
how many things in this life do you get second chance? Truly, really genuine second chances with. I'm sorry, I'm feeling myself getting on the soapbox a little bit here. I will, I will calm down. Um, I've been feeling very passionately about a lot of things, but right now in this moment, right now, it sucks. Um, there's nothing to fear. It's something you've not done before, something you might not have tried before, something you might have tried, and it didn't come out the way you wanted. I'm also using very positive language here. I'm not saying that you failed because you're not going to fail. The result was not what you were looking for. So try it again. This cow is going to, is geared to the beginner. I want you to be comfortable with knitting socks. I want you to be comfortable with your choices. We are going to talk about yarn choices, needle choices, patterns. Uh, I've been getting a lot of... Um, patterns offered to the podcast, uh, donated to the podcast that I want to share with you all. Um, and that is going to be the focus here. The no fear sock cal. We are jumping into socks. See all of that gorgeous. Wait, this way. Well, oh, I still, I can't do it. Guys. Oh, 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 wait, I, I can't do it. Um, all of this beautiful sock yarn back there, um, is dying to be knitted up. Oh, and I'm also umming a lot, and I know that irritates people too, so I apologize. I haven't been in front of the camera in a little while, so I'm just... Umming helps me think. It may be irritating to listen to, but it definitely helps me think. So again, apologize for that distraction as well. Um, yes, there's gorgeous sock yarn in the world. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter if it's indie dyed sock yarn, if it's less expensive sock yarn. Get the sock yarn fingering weight, jump in, have a good time. Um, Patton's Croy, when I first learned to knit, was one of my favorites. I love that yarn. Opal, Regia, those are far less expensive than the indie dyed yarns. And I don't want to say wear better, but they're workhorse yarns. They're not as soft. They are made, they are, they're rougher, tougher, hardier, coarser yarns. The colors are beautiful. Um, and you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. So we are going to talk about that a lot more in, on the on the Ravelry thread, and I will be setting up a Ravelry thread um, with all of this information for you. Uh, so stay tuned for that. It is going to constantly be updated. Um, I, that will and the Cal dates. I haven't. I'm so excited, and I'm saying everything at once. The Cal is going to run from March 1st until June 1st. So we have March, April, May, June. Um, or March to April, March, April, and May. Let's put it that. The last day is June 1st. Let's say, you know what? Let's say May 31st. So it's going to run from March 1st to May 31st. Um, there's 31 days in May, right? May 31st? Okay, well, the end of May. You get what I'm saying. Um, so we have three months. If it takes you three months to knit one sock, yay! There's no, this is not a race, this is not a competition, this is for you to get over your fear of socks and to learn how to knit socks and to enjoy knitting socks. I can't go a day without having a sock in my hand. Um, I love them, We all, you all know that already, I don't have to talk about it again. Love your socks, I'm going to help you get there. I'm going to help you embrace the sock. <laughs> embrace the sock knitting. Let's do it, you guys. Let's do it. And I want you to have fun. So again, I will provide lots of resources for you. The Cal kicks off um, on Friday, March 1st, and I will set up the Ravel. The Ravelry group is there, but I'll set up the threads for you. And I will constantly be adding to the threads. Um, if any, And if any of you know of any patterns that um, may be intimidating or that you want to try or you think would be good for a beginner, because I don't know them all. I know many, but not all. Please, um, add them through the thread. Um, definitely comment, let us know, add links. Um, this is interactive. I want everybody's voices heard um, on a lot of levels. I want your voices heard here on the podcast, on Instagram, within my Ravelry group. I want people to feel welcome. I want people to feel comfortable. It's sock knitting. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what you look like. I want you all knitting socks. And that is what we're going to do. Male, female, doesn't matter. I wanted to throw that in too. Let's knit socks. Okay, sock knitting. Um, yes, that is all I wanted to say about that. Um, and I want to, I say this all the time, I really am going to try, I have something really big coming up and I'm gonna talk about that in two seconds. Um, I have 
a really big test knit coming up. And I'm trying to push my chair back and it won't move. I have a really, really big test knit coming up. And actually I'm in the middle of it right now. It's called the Tundra sweater. It is by the Petite Knitter. That is her name on Instagram. I'm, I don't even want to try to pronounce her real name. I think it's Wei Chen. I know I messed that up. I'm so sorry. Let's just call her the Petite Knitter. <laughs> she put out a call for test knitters for her new pattern called the Tundra sweater. I have a picture of that right here. Um, bear with me one second as I rumple through papers. Here we go. Um, this is, that is the pattern, you guys. I'm kind of covering all of her information because this isn't even, you know what, let's do this. This isn't even the um, official pattern. This is just uh, her notes to us to work on the pattern. But this is what the pattern looks like and I will be knitting this version, this colorway, but in the men's size medium. I am, here's another gorgeous picture of it. Oh, can you stand it? The sweater is so amazing. So, so, so amazing. So where I'm going with this, I want to, I would love to chronicle my progress of knitting this sweater here on the podcast. Uh, it's a very fast turnaround time. I have my yarn, I've already started, and the test knit is due on March 24th. So that gives me four weeks to knit this sweater. Um, and I really want to chronicle that here. So I'm going to try, as I've said numerous times in the past, I am going to try to podcast once a week until the end of this test knit. Let's see if that actually happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I really, really want to do that. Um, but again, life always gets in the way, so we'll see what happens. That is my intention. We'll see where this goes. Uh, that said, it's also going to give me an opportunity to um, talk about the Cal each week and fill you guys in, show you some pictures of different things. Uh, I am still, even though this test knit's going to be going on, I still always keep a sock. Um, that that sweater is going to require concentration, so I still always keep a sock on needles, whether I'm in the car waiting to pick up the kids, etc. So um, no, I do not drive a knit. I know you just heard that, and you're thinking, is she driving a knitting? No, uh, I will drive in dead stop traffic sometimes. I will throw in a stitch or two at a stoplight. I'm not going to lie, uh, but. Yes, so there will still be sock knitting, not as much as I would like. So my physical contribution of a sock during the first month of the cal is going to be very minimal, but after that, I will be knitting. So um, yes, so hopefully I can include a lot of information for you along with progress on the test knit in the weekly episode. So let's see how that goes. And um, yes. So that is that, that's what I wanted to share. I also wanna show you, I have started the sweater, so I wanted to show you that. And here are my colors, you guys. I am starting to get a little nervous that there's not as much contrast between these two. Um, but I think the color work will, on the yoke is just going to be really subtle, and that's okay too. Have you guys seen Ju Junko Okamoto's new sweater? Of course I'm blanking on the name, um, but I will do my usual, um, overlay with the picture here. It's absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh. I love all of her sweaters. I am definitely in garment knitting mode right now. This hasn't happened to me in years and I'm running with it. So I'm really excited to be able to work on this test knit too because it, it sort of focuses me. It keeps me very focused on knitting this sweater. Start to finish, I will get it done. There it is. Focus, focus, focus. And here is my sample so far. I have cast on the sleeve. And you know what? You can see Here's the silver. You can see the color work here. Again, it's going to be very, very subtle. If I pull it back, I think, do you see it more if I bring it in? Um, and I think once I knit more of the sleeve, you're going to see it too. But you know what? I don't even mind that it's subtle. It's so beautiful. The nature is to test the pattern. Um, so I'm actually really excited. So my sleeve has begun and I decided to start with the sleeves. I know I'm gonna get that question too. Um, I decided to start with the sleeves because sleeves can be very, very, I'm glancing at the clock as usual. Sleeves can be tedious um, and I wanna get them out of the way. And then I can work on the body and the sweater is done. You knit the body, you knit the sleeves, you join everything in the round and then you work on the yoke up to the neck. So excited for this. 
I have done a Colorwork sweater in the round, um, but not with this much detail. So I am really psyched for this. So that is my test knit. Um, yeah, so let's keep going. I do have one finished object for you. I want to show you here. I'm actually going to put this on. I'm going to go off camera for one second. Okay, that's... I just bumped into... <laughs> There's a big box sitting right here uh, because of the way I have to set this all up. So I'm just going to put it on. Actually, let me hold it up first. Um, here it is, you guys. Look at that. Here is my FO. Oh my gosh. This is the chimney collar. And it's by, oh my gosh. I did not write down the name. I think her name is Elizabeth, I want to say. I'll put that right down here for you. Oh my God, this is embarrassing that I didn't write down and I can't even look it up because I'm recording on my phone <laughs> but uh, it will be right here and there will be a link to it uh, in the description box down below as always but here it is this pattern was in Norwegian and there were so many comments on Ravelry please 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 an English translation please and I saw about a month ago that she did put out an English translation and I jumped on it this yarn I purchased if for those sharp-eyed among you yes this is the yarn that i purchased at vogue knitting live you guys here it is now these little tufts I, i'll talk about the yarn in a second and explain that um this is spin cycle it's dream state yarn by spin cycle and this colorway is stay ready the beauty of this yarn is it looks like hand spun there are so many there's so much going on in this yarn it feels, it knits up like a dream. It has a hand spun feel to it, look to it. I couldn't love this yarn anymore. Um, Dream State by Spin Cycle in the Stay Ready colorway. And if you notice, this is the two skeins that I bought. There are no dye lots. So this from here to here is one skein and from here down is another. That line right there bothered me for a little while, but you know what? I didn't care. I just kept going. It's so beautiful. I think it adds character because when I put this on, I posted pictures yesterday of me wearing this on Instagram and th you don't see it. It, it. The neck is so long and you'll see that in a second. Let, let me just put it on for you. Um, actually, I want to talk about this for a sec. And then this flare that happens down at the bottom drapes over your shoulder and it ends with, you can see the increases, it ends with um, about six rows, I only did about five, because I was running out of yarn, I was literally playing yarn chicken, and knew I wasn't even going to have enough for the, oh, oh my gosh, my phone just popped right out of the stand, I will be back in one second, oh my gosh, you guys, I am so sorry, <laughs> I have never had that happen to me before. Wow. The camera literally popped right out of the tripod that I have. It's a really cheapy tripod, but that has never happened to me before. So I'm so sorry about that. Um, but anyway, what was I? Yes, I did not have enough yarn for the eye cord. So I ended up using, um, this is Cascade 220 Sport Weight that I'm going to be using for another project. But I already had a ball wound up and I thought the white cord would be beautiful against this um yeah so let's talk about these little tufts these little tufts here and color it's actually a little tuft in the yarn again it it's all it's part of that hand spun feel to it that's not even that's just a speckle in the yarn and it's it's a it's on the back b you don't really see it it gets lost in the neck um and i'm gonna put it on so you can see and it also has this gorgeous cuff so you're basically knitting and then you turn a cuff which creates the channel for the eye cord and you're knitting you knit that as you go it's so such a quick project such a beautiful design my mom saw it yesterday and she, she says oh could you please please knit one of those for me so of course i will um and i also think you could use um a fingering weight and hold it two together for this so here it is you guys can you see that? Oh, let me turn so you can see the back. I hope I'm on camera, I have no idea. Um, so there it is. So you see it's very, I'm gonna pull it up so you can see how long it is. There it is. It's so long, you guys. <laughs> it's, oh, just 
messed up my face, but that's okay. It's so warm. It's so amazing. It comes right down to your shoulders. I could not love this. And again, that, that deep demarcation line there, you know, you don't see it. You don't see it. I can pull this all the way up like this. Oh, it's just amazing. And I could probably pull it all the way up and over my hair. I just don't really want to do that right now. Uh, you can tie these. Uh, you can let them hang. It's totally up to you. I love this so much. It's so warm and cozy. It's freezing in New York today. Um, and actually flurrying a little bit. I can see out of my window. Um, so I love this. So yay! Here is my FO. You guys love it. The chimney collar. And I know the designer has also created a sweater. Uh, with this collar, which is also really beautiful. So I'll try to link to that down below. I didn't know about that until someone pointed it out to me. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So here is my spin cycle. I know, I'm just, I'm going to keep it on. It's a little warm in here, but I'm totally going to keep it on. I love it. So, um, yes, that is that. Now let's keep going. I do have a hoe, a half-finished object to show you. And this is the, are you guys ready? Ready, ready, ready. Look at that. This is the Matterhorn Sock by Charlotte, who is Stone Knits on Instagram as well as Ravelry, and I did I test knit this for her. I will be working on the second sock. It just has to take a bit of a backseat to the sweater and uh, test knit that I'm just starting. But here it is, you guys. Look at that. Let's just look at this color. Ugh, look at that color work. Isn't it beautiful? And I have not done a... Um, heel flap and gusset. I'm not saying what I usually say because I got a comment about that too. Um, it's a heel flap and gusset that I have not knit in ages and this is actually an eye of partridge heel flap. It's so beautiful. It adds so much texture to the heel. I love the color. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I can't stand it. So this yarn, again, the pattern is the Matterhorn Sock by Charlotte Knit, by Stone Knits. Uh, the designer's name is Charlotte. And I use, the yarn is by the Wool Barn. That is the main color here. And this colorway is Dottie. That's the name of the color. The brown color in here is cinnamon and this was part I know that she has individual skeins for sale but I this was part of a mini skein set that I had and this particular color is cinnamon and it's by Mitchell Mitchell CS fibers um, I think that's her name I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that I will put that down here for you um, my notes are clearly not that complete today <laughs> I wrote them so quickly but I will put that down here for you and again links down below and the Gray is Gray Gardens by Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, love it. Just beautiful. And this was actually a full skein, the Gray Gardens. I just wound off um, maybe, I think about 10 ounces, um, 10 grams mini skein. I just wound off a mini skein from the, from the full skein just so I could have it. And that is right here. So here's the Gray Gardens. Here's Dottie. Here's Gray Gardens. Can I hold all of these together? And here is the cinnamon. And there it is. Beautiful. Love it. It was so much fun. It's just the right amount of color work to keep it interesting. It's one repeat. You work your ribbing. It's one repeat. You do the, you do a couple of rows, uh, a couple of rounds in here plain. Your heel down to your foot. Uh, and the only tricky part of this, and I'm not going to lie, was figuring out, let me do this instead, figuring out where to stop, because you had to stop on the foot um, about two and a half inches, two, two and a, two and a half, 2.7 inches before you start your toe in order to get this portion of the color work in. Um... But I did it. I figured it out. So that was the only tricky part. So I would suggest trying the sock. If you're using two circular needles, um, try the sock on frequently so you get the, the sizing just right with this um, color work portion down here. But here it is. And I'm definitely in earthy colors right now. It's funny. I looked at my knitting from last, from 2018 up to this point. And it was just color, color, color. A uh, lot of socks, lots of color, lots of mittens. I'm much more muted this year. So Matterhorn Sock, and this is also, this pattern is um, on sale, I believe. I'm not sure if it will continue to be by the time 
this episode is published, but this pattern will be, I will be giving away, let's talk about the cowl for one more second as I'm still glancing at my clock. Um, the cowl is not necessarily, you're not getting a prize for finishing necessarily or for the best sock or the prettiest sock. I will be giving away a prize at the end of each month. Uh, it will be a sock yarn and a skein of sock yarn and a pattern. So that will be the that's going to be the same prize each month with a couple of little, you know, extras thrown in, stitch markers, progress keepers, etc. Um but that is what that is going to be the cowl the cowl prizes. So this pattern is going to be one of the sock patterns that I give away. So I'm not sure which month yet, but it will definitely be one of them. So stay tuned for that. And I'm still working on my vanilla sock, um, the same one I showed you last. I'm not going to show you again because there's really nothing new to look at. Uh, let's keep going. I want to talk about my book sleeve. No, let's keep going with knitting and then we'll talk about that. I want to talk about um, some knitting news with you guys. There's There, there, there are still conversations going on on Instagram um, regarding diversity, racism, inclusivity, um, etc. Those conversations are still happening on Instagram. They are important conversations. I did touch on it in my second to last episode. It is a very difficult topic for me. Um, and I've, I've already explained what I, I'm willing to talk about, what I'm willing to say and what I'm not. And that still stands. Uh, but there's a lot of things happening in the community on Instagram to try to promote more inclusivity, am I using the right word? To make more people aware of what's happening, to bring people together, to unite people as much as possible. And I just wanted to talk about two of those things here. Um, one's a little bit off topic, but I, I personally still think very relevant. Um, one is the hat not hate hashtag that is going on right now and that is being hosted by or one of the hosts is Lewis who is Brooklyn Boy Knits. I'm just glancing at my notes here. Again the hashtag is hat not hate and this hat not hate is the org dot org. We start over again. Hatnothate.org is where you can go for all of the information that will all be linked down below. And this project is promoting a stop to is promoting the stopping of bullying. Bullying is a, as we all know, a huge epidemic problem among teens, among the youth in our community, um, among youth everywhere across the board. It, it, it doesn't matter what your background is. It is a huge, huge problem. And this organization is working to bring awareness to that, um, help find solutions, help find causes for um, to stop bullying. I'm not being very eloquent right now. Um, and the goal of the, of the hashtag and of the organization is to collect 25,000 blue hats and blue there that color represents um bringing awareness to bullying that is the color uh, that they've chosen and so it's 25,000 blue hats and i believe though they want to collect those by i think the deadline is august 1st again please go to the website and check out all of these details and they want to give these hats out at various schools organizations etc um to stop bullying and I think it's an incredible movement an incredible effort that's going on and I wanted to bring that to you and let you know that that's happening and um, there is also a pattern that was written by Dawn and she is Dawn.Landix on Instagram I will put her information here for you and she has created a pattern called the Kia socks they are beautiful she created the pattern in January um, at the start of this conversation, at the start of the intensity of this conversation, and there is a knit along going on for it. It's a beautiful pattern, and it is, the more people are knitting this pattern, it's to unify us. Um, 
again, it doesn't matter what your background is. Knit a pair, knit a pair of Kia socks in a show of solidar solidarity um, and this topic is difficult for me. It really is, you guys, um, for a lot of reasons, but it's necessary um, and the discomfort is necessary. So whew, it's all about breathing. The sock pattern is beautiful. Thank you so much, Dawn, for writing it up, for creating this pattern. Uh, and I do hope that it succeeds in its mission of uniting as many knitters within this amazing community as possible. This situation that's happening right now, I think ultimately will lead to good. I truly believe that. We just have to keep talking and listening and being there for one another and supporting one another. So... That information will also be in the description box down below. Um, yes, what else do I want to talk about? Um, I also want to talk about a giveaway. I mentioned this in the last episode that I wanted to do a giveaway for, did I bring the book? I th yes, I did. Uh, hold on. I wanted to give away a copy of this uh, knitting planner and what I would love you to do uh, I'm giving away a copy on Instagram and a copy here I'm going to try today is Wednesday I'm going to try to get this podcast up by the end of the day and the, I will announce the winner on Friday March 1st what you have to do to be eligible to win be a subscriber of the podcast uh, Come on over and follow me on Instagram if you don't already and leave a comment down below what you have to do. I will be picking the winner from the comments down below in this episode. Tell me why you want to knit socks or why you do knit socks. I want to hear from you. I want to know why you want to knit socks or why you do knit socks, what you love about socks, uh, what gets you excited about socks, what you hope to accomplish in your sock knitting. Share your sock thoughts with me in the comments down below and I will pick random number generator. I will pick the winner from there. I will announce the winner um, within the comment. I will let the winner of the the winner of the of the giveaway know that they've won and request that they reach out to me via email or direct message on Instagram so I can get their information and get this mailed out. Yes, this is a yearly planner um, and it is geared for 2019, but you know, and I know we're two months in, but honestly, if you start for March, you can carry over two months into 2020. I really don't think it matters. Or just ignore the dates altogether and just enjoy the planner. There's so much in here for you to use and keep at your disposal, keep your thoughts together. So yes, I will be, that is how I will pick the winner here on Instagram, uh, on, here on the podcast. And on Instagram, I will put up the post today and pick the winner Friday. Leave a comment down below for me, same general question, and random number generator, I will pick the winner there as well. And then I will get these mailed out to you as soon as possible, and they will be coming with a little surprise. <laughs> so can't send out a planner and have a sock cal if we're not sending out maybe some sock yarn. I don't know. We'll see. So there you go, you guys. Um, that is a lot of information in a relatively short episode. It is about three minutes after 11 right now. I have to go and pick up my son. And I want to say thank you so much for being here, for watching my podcast, for all of your comments. There have been so many lately. I have finally, I think, caught up with reading most of them. Um, thank you. Your interaction with me, your presence here on the podcast and on Instagram. Your feedback means so much to me. I have said that before, but I really want to stress it. I love this. I'm happy to have this platform to bring awareness to certain things for you, to let you know what's happening in the knitting community. Some of you may not be aware. Um, and you can take the information and do with it what you will. There is no pressure here. I'm not asking anyone to do anything other than maybe listen. Um, consider, sit with it for a bit, do with it what you will. Thank you so much for being here. And that applies to everything. It applies to the conversation. It applies to knitting. It applies to everything, to your, to life. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your life here with me, um, for taking the time to watch. You all mean so very much to me. 
thank you and I hopefully will see you all again very very soon thank you very much take care everybody happy new day